Thank you so much for staying with us here on the Sports Max Zone. As we turn our attention to the fast approaching 2024 Paris Olympic Games, with roughly 11 days to go, the highly anticipated Olympiad, the Sports Max Zone continues another week of special Olympic features to whet your appetite. And Lance, you know, we're getting so excited because the Olympics is set to be live on your home of champions, one of our biggest products. And, you know, we're just happy that we're able to serve our viewers. I know we're going to have different shows, um, morning shows, afternoon shows. A lot of work has gone into this and it will all be done live here on our channel. Yeah, of course, the Olympic Games would represent the pinnacle of all, all sporting um, platforms and um, everyone targets the Olympics if you do in fact compete in an Olympic sport yeah because it is the biggest of, of them all so we are anxious to see the start of the Olympic Games and the Caribbean has such a rich history at uh, the Olympic Games that we all get excited when the Olympic Games come around because we know that well, we're gonna get medals re yes recent recent decades would have told us that there are medals in there for the Caribbean. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's also important when you think about the amount of time and effort that athletes put into training for this that happens every four years. It's a big, big deal. And to me, you know, coming into this Olympics, there would have been many athletes that missed out because of injuries and other factors. And it must be painful to them, Lance, because what is one of the events that everybody looks forward to it's like a World Cup, right? Football World Cup. The Olympics is what everybody has worked so hard. And just to even sometimes call yourself an Olympian is a big, big deal. Yeah, and of course, the biggest story that sides with what you have just mentioned is Elaine Thompson, hero, who is the uh, double Olympic uh, sprint champion from Rio and uh, Tokyo, unable to compete in Paris because of an injury. And uh, there are doubts surrounding the current fitness of the outstanding Bahamian Sean Emila Weibo. Uh, the defending 400 meter champion on, on the women's side. So, you know, that just underlines the point that you're making that athletes have to wait four years for the Olympic Games. And uh, whenever they are unfortunate enough to have an injury close enough to the Olympics that rules them out of the Games, it is, it is shattering for them all, especially in the case of uh, Elaine Thompson Hero, who is now 32 years old. And uh, you would think that given her age, that this would be a prime Olympic. Uh, period for her, yeah. uh, although she had won, you know, twice before, well, four times before, uh, two Olympics before. So um, huge disappointment for her, but we wish the rest of the Caribbean athletes who are fit and ready all the best because they are world class, many of them, and uh, they are legitimately putting themselves in line for medals. Yeah, I'm really, really sorry for Elaine. But as you said, you know, looking forward to see what our Caribbean has to offer. Lance, would you consider yourself an Olympian? No, I'm not an Olympian. I never competed at the Olympics. But you've gone to so many, dude. Yeah, but... Um, this will be your w what number Olympics that you've worked on? Eight. <laughs> dude, there should be medals for people like him. <laughs> so what are you looking forward to most this Olympic? <sighs> I mean, do you? Okay, so you've covered eight. This will be your eighth Olympics, right? Or you've covered eight and this will be a ninth? Eight. This, this would make eight. Um, okay, so what do you think will be different for this Olympics from the first one that you covered? Do you remember the first one that you covered? Of course. Yeah, well, the first one I've, I physically went to was Barcelona in 1992, which is your city. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was a great experience. It was really a tremendous experience for me to be at the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona watching all the athletes compete and um, and the Caribbean had outstanding athletes from then yeah, yeah there were there were athletes who were challenging for for medals and there was a great Sergei Bubka who was a world pole vault record holder trying to win Olympic gold for the first time didn't quite make it because he kept disappointing at Olympic Games but it was a tremendous experience and um, I, I think Paris will not disappoint. I think Paris will be as good an Olympic Games as we've ever seen. 
and we know that you will not disappoint either. So we'll be looking forward to see what work you do for us. All right, I hear you. All right, so moving along from Lance now, it's Monday. So that means it's another episode of our Memory Monday feature where Kimani O'Sullivan had a walk down memory lane with three-time Olympian and mile relay silver medalist Jamaica's Birdland Cameron, who was also the 1983 World 400 meter champion. Three time Olympian, Birdland Bert Cameron. Thank you for joining me on this Memory Monday. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, let's get to the meat of the matter. What's your most memorable Olympic moment? Well, I mean, it's all three Olympics, I have good memories. But the most memorable one is in um, 1984 in LA. That time I was, I was a favorite to win the 400 meter. Just came off winning the, the 400 meter world championship. So I'm the world champion going into the Olympics. So, you know, I was on cloud nine. Yeah. I was one of the happiest athletes. Coming out of Jamaica was the best prospect of winning the goal. And at that time, I don't think anything could stop me because I said it. Only thing could stop me and if I got hurt. Eight. So Antonio McKay has made it clear he does not even want to lose in the semi-final. But Cameron is flowing, and so too is Frayne of Australia who run 45-3-2. Cameron's in trouble and pulled out. He's pulled up and he's started again. Ima Lewis is most memorable. It was my, it, it, it was so bad. Because I went in the race as the, fine, as the favorite, running the first 100 meter, feeling comfortable, feeling great. And as soon as I'm ready to start to distribute my pace, felt a pain in my hamstring. So I jumped. I said, you know, when I jump once, I said, no, but I can't stop. So I jump again. And it's the pain start to get more serious. So I try to run again and I jump again. Jump three times. And then the person in lane one, I was in lane two, the person in lane one passed me. And I said, damn, something is wrong. So I looked up in the stands, look around, and I was at last at that time. And I said, I cannot, there's no way I can stop. After I prepared myself for four years for this, never lost a race in three years. Every 400 I run, I'm just winning easy. And I looked up and I start to run. And while I start to run, I mean, the pain was still there, but I'm not even concentrating on the pain. I was just running. I was just running and I felt, when I'm running, I felt like I'm getting closer. And every time I feel like I'm getting closer, I feel stronger. Yeah, and you were looking to the side quite a few times during yeah, the race. Yeah, that, that is when I, I, I realized that I am in good, I'm in a good situation. And all I needed to do now is just qualify. So when I came off the bend, I started to look. I looked at my right and I started to count how many people were in front of me. At that time, it was about five. And it takes four, it's not like it's, you take four to get to the final. So, so I started to run again. And when I, I looked up again and I was at third, so I started to look across and look across and then I end up finish fourth, which stopped about five times and still won 45-1-0. And I know that I'm in the finals. But after finish run, I looked beside me and a great man was standing up beside me, Herb McKinley. I wonder how Herb McKinley get on the field. And he said to me, Bert, are you okay? And I said, mm -hmm. Then I started to walk, walk through the tunnel and there was so much pain and the muscles just get really tight. And that same night I went to my sponsor and they took me to a doctor. I got a needle about this long. And it seemed like I get it worse because the next day I couldn't do anything. But for me, it just teach. I mean, I was still there and I was still cheering for my teammates and 
I felt like 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 we are a team, but I was the per I was the person who was supposed to take home the gold. Because Jamaica always have somebody who's gonna take home a gold medal. And that was my time. So for me, that was one of the I mean track and field looked at me and said to me that it was one of the greatest races that 400 meter that ever run. And I took that with me until today. All right, so Mr. Cameron, speak to me about your silver medal at the Olympics. I mean, four by four. Oh, well, in, that was in 1988, right? That, is the, that was the year when nobody gave me any chance for even running in the 400. I, I become one of the underdog now, you know. I, so my teammate, my teammate and I, about four of us, Winthrop Graham, Devon Morris, Howard Davis, and myself. I mean, they decided that this year probably will be my last round. And they, they, they all come together with myself and said, boy, I'm not gonna let Bert, Bert goes out, go out and not, a, not getting a medal from the Olympic Games. So they did it for you? Yeah, so what happened though was the same year of Gilbert. You know, it was Gilbert. We don't we never forget that. Even although we weren't here, I mean we we're getting report that part of Jamaica disappear and wash away and this and that and we decided said we're gonna do well. So in the finals now, I mean I know that the, you guys not seen it here in Jamaica because of the a lot of people, some, probably some people could see it. And when we went out there, man, it was Devon Morris, who, no, Howard, 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 who, who Dave, Howard Davis, who led off. And he, when he went out, man, he was looking so good coming around the first bed. He hand over second. And we said, boy, we have to roll it like that. Then Devon Morris took the button. And Devon did just the same. And right there, you now we're in a clear second place and we have to hold it. And then Winthrop Graham, Winthrop Graham took the button and handed it over in second to, to me. So I said, my God, now everything is on me and to maintain. And when I took that button, man, and I took off, when I went on the back stretch, everybody came at me. And I said, no, but I can't give this up, you know. I cannot, I cannot allow another athlete to pass. And Germany was wrestled right next to me. And when I came on the last 100 meter, I started to sprint. And I said, I sprint, and I, and I sprint, and I feel like they're still coming. And I realized I went through the tape, and I hold up the button and said, I finally received my medal at the Olympics. All right, Mr. Cameron, thank you for joining me on Memory Monday. It was a pleasure, and all the best. Thank you. Bethlehem Cameron there, you know, speaking about the same things that we spoke about yeah. before we introduced the yeah. feature, injuries, determination, how hard people work towards it, the amount of things that's on the line, Lance, yeah. when it is an Olympic year. Yeah, and that was such a memorable race, that semi-final where he, he pulled up and uh, looked as if he was not going to make the final, but he ran really hard. In lane one, the athlete who had passed is Elvis Ford, the Barbadian, who ran a national record in that event. I think he finished sixth. His record, by the way, broken in the past couple of years by Jonathan Jones. It was a long-standing 400 record for Barbados. So uh, just good to see the video there with Bert Cameron on a memorable moment there and the Barbadian Elvis Ford on, on his inside. But Cameron was a true champion, a really outstanding runner, and it was a massive disappointment in 84 when that happened to him because it was a foregone conclusion. If there is ever, ever, ever is a foregone conclusion in sport that he should have won the gold medal. Yeah. All right, Lance. Well, we're going to take another quick break and when we come back, it's interactive. <laughs> 